How many people here watch Frida Show? <laughs> awesome. Let's talk about where you came from, because I think a lot of people here are familiar with your music, obviously, your message, your show, but like, how did Freddie Ross turn into Big Frida? Well, growing up in New Orleans, it was, you know, typical New Orleans. New Orleans is a difficult place to actually grow up in. Um, it's a city with a lot of love, though. It's a, it's a lot of love. It's family orientated. But it, it gets rough in certain areas, in certain parts. You know, we have a lot of killings and a lot of nonsense that happens in New Orleans. But um, my mom and my stepdad always protected us as we were kids growing up. Like any other parents, you know, they fought for me at school. Whatever they needed to do for me to keep me on a positive path, that's what my parents did. And they kept me into church. They kept me into Bible study. Um, they just always made sure I had my hands busy in something where I couldn't get wrapped up in all of the negative things that was happening in New Orleans. Um, my background comes from church. I started, you know, singing in the church choir when I was really young, about six, seven years old. Nobody else reps New Orleans like you do. No. Nah. I mean, you know, a lot of times um, God's put different people in different situations to represent certain things. And I, I feel like on the journey of bounce music, a lot of people have came before me and a lot will come after me. But it was my time and my season to represent bounce music in a certain way that the world can accept it and people can feel free and be themselves and be able to express and learn a new culture all the way from New Orleans. Well, I think something that's really interesting about your background is that you come from like a church and gospel background and musically you you segued to bounce music, which is very, very different, but there's like a spirit, a it very is. similar spirit to your bounce music as well. It is. I mean, I feel like I still have that connection. Um, it's just like when I would have my choir and I would put my hands open and the choir would start singing. It's just like now I point my finger and ass it starts shaking. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the booty whisperer. Yes, <laughs> I totally am. <laughs> oh, I had to ask, has Miley taken your twerking classes yet? I'm still waiting. The offer still stands, y'all. It still stands. Miley, come on, girl. So you do give cl classes, Yeah, right? we do do bounce classes. I usually teach them um, sometime a day before the show, you know, if I'm playing in a particular place, if they set it up, if that certain city set it up, or even the day of the show, we may have a bounce class to make sure all those asses are rotating right at the show that night. So what is the secret to bouncing that booty? Um, well, the secret definitely is uh, it takes a lot of practice. A lot of people in New Orleans, we've been shaking since we were babies, you know, like in Pampers. You, if you go on any of the YouTube videos, you see little bitty babies shaking and their little Pampers just going up and down. So it's instilled in, in us in New Orleans, you know, from zero to 99, either, you know, grandma's twerks, you know, like, <laughs> like I be having everybody doing it. So it's really instilled in us in, in New Orleans. But like what I teach, tell people all the time, um, get in that mirror, get in the mirror and that mirror will help you be able to show you show you what your body can actually do and and the way that you can make it move in certain ways and if you feel like it's not going a certain way you just keep watching in that mirror and i bet you it'll change as a kid growing up though like this is a very bold you know declaration a personal declaration to make in life which i think is one of the most inspiring things about you and your work but like growing up how hard was it or how easy was it to to find that power in yourself and declare that for yourself? Well, it definitely wasn't easy. It was a journey, um, especially growing up in New Orleans. You know, I was always, you know, picked on. I was called names. I mean, you know, the, we had the bullying. But a lot of the times when people came at me with negative stuff, I always flipped it. And they used to be like, oh, you fat faggot. And I'd be like, thank you. And it will mess people head up because I didn't entertain the foolishness. And they would usually want me to be like, you know, 
I, I could have got on their level and got gangsta and fought them. I, you know, and I went through all of that with fighting people and having to stand up for who I am. You know, my mom throwing me back out there like, you better go back out there and fight them and don't let anybody, you know, take advantage of you. So it was a, you know, a period in the process that I went through that as well. But one of the things that I focused on in New Orleans, I saw that a lot of gay people wasn't getting the respect that they deserved. And Kate Ray even being one of my friends, she wasn't getting the respect that she deserved. And I saw that. And one of the things I said growing up, I was going to help change that in New Orleans and make that change where any, any you know, like gangster, murderer, any person will be comfortable to come up to a gay person, shake their hand, and not feel threatened by anything. And on everything that I did for the last 10 years, it has worked. I can speak to any boys in, a, in the city. They come up, they respect me. And not only they respect me now, they respect every gay in the city. So it was, it was a journey of just trying to flip it and transform it and, and make it more of a positive thing. And the bounce music and the culture of the bounce, it definitely helped with that as well on that journey. Because the girls were, most of the girls in the city, they were our supporters. And wherever the girls went, the guys followed. So they, the guys started loving us more than the girls. Like, oh, you got to get all the girls to come, you know? So <laughs> it was just like, OK, now I know how I'm going to flip this. You Frida's know? the one who can get anyone to pop. Yeah. To pop it. Yeah. Yeah? Usually that I makes can. sense. Yeah, usually I can. And um, I just used all of those, those, those energies and turned them into positives and, you know, let people know. It's not about judging. It's not about you know, looking at people a certain way because of who they are or whatever. Just let everybody be themselves. And New Orleans have definitely opened up to that place where the culture has grown, the spirit of the people, the, the acceptance, the whole nine yards. Well, it's interesting. If, yeah. Thank you. I've heard you also talk about, address the idea of so-called sissy bounce. Well, there's no such thing called sissy bounce. It's called bounce music. We don't separate it. It just always has been bounce music. We have sissy rappers that represent the culture of bounce music, but it also defends. I always have this fuss with a lot of the straight rappers because when people come up to them and say, oh, you do sissy bounce, it makes them offended. So that's why it never has been separated in New Orleans, because there are so many different bounce artists, straight, gay. So we never did separate it. It's just one type of music, bounce music. You know, everybody want to put us in a category or put a label on us. No, bounce music. In the last 10 years or so, in New Orleans, the people there, the community there, have gone through so much. We have. Um, can you talk a little bit about your Katrina experience and how that changed you? Well, my Katrina experience definitely changed me the way that I, w I started looking at life in a whole different, you know, light because of I never thought that for a moment that it will be something so tragic that will hit our city and then all of the people that, you know, lost all of their stuff I didn't even recognize who I was myself when Katrina hit, you know, sleeping on the bridge. You know, it didn't matter who you were, if you had money, everybody was the same. We were all in one boat, and we were all trying to get to a shore off of that boat. So Katrina taught me to learn how to uh, accept everything that happens around the world and appreciate what we have in a better light. The most enjoyable thing about Katrina was when I saw my mom's face and we reunited because we were separated. And that best feeling was to connect back with my family and just get that love. My mom showed up at the bus station and we just were like all in tears and happy and the best feeling in the world. Do you get like mail? Oh, house? yeah, fan mail. I mean, I get all type of gifts and little trinkets. Yeah, what's, the, what's the craziest or the best thing that you've ever gotten sent? Oh, well, 
because I like to look good. So I would like I like when they send me more hair. <laughs> yes. More bundles. But I like, they send me purses, they send me big stereo systems, you know, they send me all kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, talk about the music a little bit. The Obviously, your style comes from a legacy of Bounce in New Orleans, but also, like, was it last night that you performed? Yes. With last night, New Kids on the Block, TLC. <laughs> And Nelly in New Orleans at the Smoothie King Center. Yes, I came straight from there to here this morning. Haven't slept yet. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. New Kids on the Black, TLC, Nelly, and Big Frida. Yes. <laughs> Together at last. It was epic. It went down last night in New Orleans. Do the new kids, are the new kids down with bounce? Oh. They're my friends. They're the ones invited me to the show to perform on their show. Me and Donnie is real cool, and um, we always hang out. So uh, I'll be on him and Jenny's show coming soon. All right. Yeah. So next you have a book coming out, Memoirs. Yes, God Save the Queen Diva. Y'all can pre-order now. And this book is definitely going to give the backstory, all of the little details that y'all can't really see on the show, you know, and just my whole story of where I come from into currently now. And uh, people will really be able to get a detail. The show only shows so much. It's only 30 minutes, you know, and so many episodes. Not enough episodes. Right. Per season. We need more Frida. More Frida. Yes, y'all keep telling them, more Frida. <laughs> We certainly have seen a lot of what you've gone through through the show oh, yeah, in the last definitely. few years. Um, the season three finale was quite a finale. Yes, it was. Um, and it kind of encompassed a lot of things, not just your music and your career, but your relationship with your mother, mm -hmm. who you lost during the course of the show. Yes. And also your relationship, which you allowed everybody a, a glimpse into you know for for years now yes was any of that just insanely hard to 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 let the world see it definitely um i had my moments um you know being that i wanted a show i know that i was going to have to let a lot go but i also i had some moments where i was just like holding back and didn't want certain things show especially when like my mom passed it was a tough decision, but I had to share my mom with the world, and I, it, she was a, such a great character on the show, and everyone loved her. And I just wanted people to see, you know, not a lot of different artists out there who have reality shows or whatever. Um, they don't let them get as detailed and as deep into their lives, you know, and it was something that needed to be shown. Do you feel like you write your personal life into your music? I definitely do. And this next album is going to be even more serious. Serious? Yes. So what kind of serious? I mean, like, serious deep into more to the love life. And oh, yeah. Yeah. It might be my Mary J album. Yes. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Okay, can we ask, are you still in touch with Devin? Yes, Devin is still my significant other. Ah, interesting. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you have a reality show and you like let everybody into your life. Yes, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> You've also done a number of collaborations, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Got some new collaborations coming. Like? Well, um, me and Diplo's song is finally done. DJ Snake, um, working on something with Missy Elliott. <laughs> there's, there's some good things happening this, this time around, so y'all be looking out. <laughs> you know, my journey in this whole game was not planned. You know, actually, I thought that I would be a gospel singer and that I would be writing gospel songs and you know, directing choirs and have my own choir and, and on that path. And then it just totally flipped. Um, 
but we are a family. My team is definitely a family. I'm like the mother of the family. They all call me mama. The managers, they, you know, we all have our connection. We go hard for each other. Like, we have each other backs. You know, we can count on each other for anything. And uh, when we come together and work, you know, we, we work and then we, we have fun. You know, we are definitely a family, though. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Big Frida. Thank you all so much. I appreciate each and every last one of y'all.